Hello friends, welcome to this guide on the Polka Radar and catching shiny Pokemon in Pokemon's Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So let's start off by talking about the Poker Radar. Now the Poker Radar is a key item. You get given this item after you complete the Elite Four, after you complete your Sinnoh uh, Pokedex and obtain the National Dex. Now, once you have the Poker Radar, you'll be able to use it. And how you use it is by entering patches of grass in the, the, the Sinnoh region. Once you enter a patch of grass and you activate the Poker Radar, you will see four patches of grass that will start rustling in that area. Now, there are four different types of rustling grass there is your kind of standard one which is just very short bits of grass coming out of it there is a second one which has very long kind of stemmed bits of grass coming out of it you'll be able to identify the two very easily this one indicates that it will be a pokemon with its hidden ability there is a third patch of grass which is very sparkly and that indicates that there will be a shiny pokemon in there and then there is a fourth patch of grass which i've not come across yet but i do know it exists and that is a shiny patch with the longer stemmed grass coming out of it which indicates it is a shiny pokemon with its hidden ability now very rare patch of grass but they are the four types of grass that you can encounter when you activate the pokemon radar next this leads us into chains so a chaining and chaining for shiny pokemon or high iv pokemon is something that you would do with the pocket radar now when you activate the patches of grass the first four initial grass patches will will activate you can run into any one of these patches of grass uh, to encounter a Pokemon. The Pokemon will be random just depending on the area that you're in and the patch of grass that you run into. So if the Pokemon that you run into you encounter in that first patch of grass is a Pokemon that you would like to chain or shiny hunt then you can continue on from this point by either defeating the Pokemon or catching it. This will then in turn start your chain. So once you've encountered that first Pokemon in your chain, that will be the Pokemon that will continue to spawn every time you're in the current chain. So beat this Pokemon or you catch it, then the next patches of grass will spawn and the same Pokemon will be in those patches of grass. And then as you get higher in the chain, they'll all be the same Pokemon. And you continue to do this process by encountering these rustling bits of grass until you reach a high enough chain where your shiny chances are increased to an exponential rate. But before we get into any of that, there are a few prerequisites that we need to discuss and a bit of information that we need to make you aware of. So it optimizes your chances of being able to have a successful chain run and also increase your chances to be able to get to the highest point possible to get a shiny Pokemon. So the things that you're gonna require before you start your chain hunting are gonna be a few items and other things that can help you out. The first one obviously being the Poker Radar. You're gonna need that before you can do any, any of this. There is a chain app that you can get on your Pokétech device. Uh, you can get that from visiting uh, Romanos Park. Professor Oak will give you that once you reach that area for the first time. Now this is a really good app to have because it keeps track of the chain that you currently own with a specific Pokémon and then you will you know if you lose count or if you're not writing it down at least having the app you'll be able to see and keep check on where you are in your current chain the next thing you're going to need is a bolt load of pokeballs and i mean a bolt load you want to have enough to guarantee that you can hit a chain of 40 uh, you want to uh, have a combination i think of quick balls and repeat balls because you're going to be catching the same pokemon over and over again so repeat balls make sense quick balls give you the best capture rates outside of a master ball and that first kind of turn. You're gonna need lots of repels as well. And I mean, when I say a boatload of Pokeballs, you're gonna need a, a lot of repels. Don't underestimate how many repels you need. Get super repels or max repels, whichever ones you can afford or which ones you prefer. Make sure that you've got a Pokemon in your party at the top of your party that is a higher level than the highest Pokemon that you can encounter in that area as well. So when you activate your max repels or super repels, you're not gonna make or have any encounters that's gonna ruin 
your chain. The other thing to do and make sure that you are doing is assign or register the poker radar to one of your key registered items. So, and make sure it is the only one that you've got registered. So it's a quick way for you to just hit your plus button on your controller and it will just activate it. Only having that assigned will mean that you're not gonna interfere with the chain by activating another item. Make sure you turn your auto saves off because if auto save is on, it can ruin everything and you are gonna be saving throughout this process. You don't want to be affecting that save. And I think that about does it. So with all of these things gathered, got, and it you're ready you can then choose which area of grass you'd like to start your chain in now i would recommend trying to find patches of grass that are a large area you don't really want to be doing it in smaller areas of grass because this will just complicate chaining pokemon so you want a very large space of grass the one i'm using here is on route 218 and this is because i want to hunt dittos uh, so i'm going to try and get a shiny ditto and obviously while i'm doing it hopefully get some high iv dittos as well that i'll be able to use later on for breeding projects and, and so on so the first thing you want to do is enter the patch of grass try and get right in the middle of the area of grass where you are and then activate your first repel and then save your game. This is the first step in the process. Next thing you wanna do is activate your poker radar and either press in your plus icon if you have it registered or just access it in your bag and then activate it that way. This will then in turn activate the four first patches of grass. Now, before we get into the, the, the chances of your chain continuing, you need to talk about the, the, the rates that you're gonna have uh, depending on where the rustling grass is in regards to your kind of starting point. There are a number of things that can help you increase and make your chain continuing more likely and one of them is actually deciding on which patch of grass you decide to go into in regards to how far away it is from you. So I'm just going to throw up this quick graphic here. You can see on the graphic that you are, um, it will show you the squares from one to four in uh, squares away from where your starting point is. So if you take one step into a patch of grass, so if, let's just for instance sake, you've got a patch of grass and it is one step away from you. If you enter that and you, you defeat the Pokemon, your chances of your chain continuing from this square will be 53%. So you haven't got great rates if your square is right next to you. If you take two steps away from where you are and enter that second uh, patch of grass that uh, in is two steps away, you will have a 63% chance if you defeat the Pokemon and then you can for your chain to continue. The third, three steps away, will give you a 73% chance for your chain to continue if you defeat the Pokemon. And your fourth square away, like four steps away, will give you an 83% chance of your chain continuing. So that you can get, you get the idea where if you are taking further steps away from where your starting point is, you're gonna have higher chances of your chain continuing. On top of that, if you catch the Pokemon rather than defeating it, if you catch it, you'll get a 10% boost to your square kind of rating. So if you're four steps away from your initial starting point, which is 83%, then you've got to add on the 10% from catching the Pokemon. That'll give you a 93% chance of your chain continuing. And yes, they are the best rates that you can get. And you're always going to have to, unfortunately, and have the chance that you will always have a 7% chance, no matter what you do, that your chain can break. And that is just the game being cruel, unfortunately. They are just the bad odds. But you've got to look at it like this. The odds are in your favor. So realistically, really what you want to be doing is always going for the furthest patch of rustling grass away from you. So you want to always be going into that fourth square or four steps away wherever possible. Now, there might be situations where you're in the middle of a chain and the patches of rustling grass aren't four, four steps away from you. What you can do in this situation is avoid all the rustling patches of grass and just do 50 steps. This will charge up your poker radar so you can then reactivate it. That is not going to break your chain and hopefully it'll give you better patches of grass for you to encounter these Pokemon and then continue your chain. And unlike previous generations, previous games where we've had the poker radar, don't worry about running into patches of grass on corners, on edges, next to each other. None of that really matters in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. It just needs to be four steps away to maximize your chances. Obviously, if it is three steps away, you're gonna lower those chances of your chain continuing. But the idea of this whole thing is to continue your chain from one 
to 40. So you really want to get to to 40 because that's where it's going to maximize everything. So we'll get into the odds now. If you're shiny chain hunting, when you first start off, your shiny odds are going to be 1 in 4096, just like any regular ones. I'm just going to mention as well that the shiny charm, if you've got it, it won't have any effect on this method. So it doesn't have any effect at all um, and doesn't interfere with it. The odds are unaffected by the shiny charm coding in the game. Now, as you get higher in your chain, your odds of getting a shiny are going to increase significantly. So as you can see on the graphic here that we've got on the screen, your first Pokemon encounter will have that 1 in 4096 rate, shiny chance of appearing in one of the patches of grass, of course. Then if we go to your 10th encounter, so the, 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 the 10th chain that you're on, if you can chain 10 Pokemon, the 10th will then reduce significantly again. It will be about 1 in 2500. Then your 20th chain, you're going to be looking at 1 in 1800. Your 30th chain drops again to 1 in 1300. And now this is where it starts to get interesting. So once you hit a chain of 35, this is when your odds really start to drastically drop. So on your 36th chain, you're going to have a, ch a 1 in 1000 chance of a shiny patch appearing. You're going to have on your 37th, a 1 in 800 chance of a, a shiny patch appearing. On your 38th chain, you're going to have a 1 in 400 chance of uh, a shiny patch appearing and then on your 39th chain you're going to have one in 200 chance of a shiny patch appearing and then on your 40th chain this is where the odds max out you're going to have a one in 99 chance of a shiny patch appearing and this is the number that you want to get to it won't matter how much higher you go in your chaining after this you can go to uh, 88 99 it's not going to change the odds you're sure you can go to a thousand chain not that you would ever be able to do that but your odds are never going to get better than that so a chain of 40 is going to be the best result for you this is where we're aiming for that's what you want to try and do all of these stats i've got to give a big shout out to kurt kafonix over on twitter for providing all of this kind of data information he was one of the the main data miners that we've had providing us with information on brilliant diamond shannon pearl you can see he's got some nice infographics here about the the the, um, the kind of steep decline when you are shiny hunting with the poker radar so they're the shiny odds and they're your chain numbers that you want to be aiming for there are some other kind of things tied into your chain events as well so ivs on pokemon now again kurt had posted out information about the the uh, the poker radar and it appears to be a little bit broken and um, because once you hit a chain of 20 um you are going to be guaranteed on that 20th encounter you're going to be guaranteed a pokemon with one guaranteed perfect iv then on your 30th encounter in your chain so your your 30th pokemon in the chain you're going to be guaranteed two perfect ivs and on your 40th chain only on these ones, the exact number, you'll be guaranteed a Pokemon with three perfect IVs. Now, how we uh, presume it's meant to be worked is from Pokemon from after 20 to up to 30, you're going to always, doesn't matter what, what part of the chain you're in, you could be at 22, you could be at 25 or 27, they should all have a one perfect IV. Unfortunately, that isn't the case. It's only that 20th, the 30th and the 40th Pokemon that have them. Um, so again, with the when you hit your chain of 30, you're going to have that guaranteed two perfect IV Pokemon, but then your 31st chain Pokemon is not going to be guaranteed anything and that carries on right up until your 40th chain where you get that guaranteed three iv pokemon so ev everything in between those exact numbers will not have any guarantees where and this is where we think it's broken and hopefully this is something that is patched because it should really realistically be from 20 to 30 from 30 to 40 and then from 40 onwards and if you've got enough confidence and you've got enough luck you're going to need a lot of luck to do this there is a way to get a five iv guaranteed pokemon but you've got to hit a chain of 100 and that is near impossible to do um, if any of you ever managed to do it, please comment down in the, the comment section. Let me know. I would love to hear a success story like that. So we've covered the rates of how you can increase your chances to continue your chain. So it is always going for that fourth patch of grass, catching the Pokemon, and that's going to give you the best odds possible to have your chain continuing. 
that is going to give you that 93%. Now, bear in mind, there will always be a 7% chance if you do everything right that the chain, for whatever reason, will just not continue. But we now need to look at what things in game can break your chain, things you want to avoid doing when you're in the middle of a chain. You want to make sure that you are not encountering any trainers. A trainer encounter while you're in the middle of a train will break it. Shutting off your game will break the chain. So if you're safe and then you turn your system off completely, then you will lose your chain. You can put your system into sleep mode. Uh, that is totally fine and that will not break your chain. Getting on your bike will break your chain and this is why at the start I mentioned taking your bike off registered items so when you hit that plus icon it's not even a possibility there for you to access it. Visiting the underground is another one. Do not visit the underground. Do not have your explorer kit registered as one of your registered items. Just do not do that. That will break your chain and make sure you've got enough repels. This is why I said have enough repels because encountering a wild Pokemon or another Pokemon when you're in the middle of a chain will break the chain. So they're the main things that are gonna break a chain. Leaving the grassy area will not break the chain um, and all the other kind of myths and stuff like that will not break your chain. These are the main things that will break your chain. So how do we do it? So what we wanna do is I've mentioned the four squares where as we're, this is our starting point here. Um, we want to activate the poker radar and then you can see here that we've got four the furthest patch of grass uh, if we put a little grid over you can see that we've got a patch of four there so we'll try and get to that one and we'll enter it and we'll see which pokemon it is and it is a ditto so that is a good start for us that is the pokemon that we're going to be hunting for in this uh, we want to try and catch it as i say we've got quick balls and then repeat balls to catch this pokemon and then once we've caught it, we kind of got to keep our fingers crossed that the chain continues because we've done everything correctly. We've entered that fourth area and we've also caught the Pokemon. So that gives us a 93% chance of the chain continuing. And as you see, once we come out, you'll hear a little jingle that will mean that the chain is continuing. So this is the bit where you're kind of, every time you finish the Pokemon battle and it's got that black screen, you're kind of listening out to make sure that you hear the jingle. If you hear the jingle before the screen comes back on, you know that the chain is continuing and then you want to identify that next patch of grass that you're going to be entering. So again, we're going to be counting out four squares away from us and then entering that patch of grass. All the time when you're doing this as well, just make sure you take a quick glance over each individual patch of grass to make sure that there is not a shiny just popping up randomly because it can happen. Obviously, the higher you go in chains, the, the better your odds are going to get. And so you don't necessarily always need to get to that 40. That will just max out your odds. There are chances, obviously, on the way to that 40 chain. So always make sure that you look at each individual bit of grass to make sure that you are able to identify if there is a shiny there or a hidden ability there, whatever you're hunting. So we enter the second chain and it is in that fourth patch of grass. Again, gonna catch the ditto and then again, we're gonna just hope that the chain continues and we hear that jingle again and those rustling patches of grass. As you can see, we've got it again. We enter the third one and then we continue to do this on and on and on. And this run that I did, this is the final run that I did, and uh, we do manage to get up to a chain of 40. Now, this is the next important point. When you get to your chain of 40, you no longer need to continue the chain. What you want to do is keep reactivating your Pokemon radar. You've got the best shiny odds at this point. So if you continue your chain on number 40 and the patches of grass aren't shiny, there's no shinies in there, what you can do is just take 50 steps at this point, make sure you're avoiding all these bits of grass and then reactivate your poker radar and then see if these new patches of grass will have a shiny in them. And what you wanna do is just repeat this process over and over again. This ties into having a lot of repels because you don't wanna be at this point and then run out of repels and have a wild Pokemon encounter. That will break everything and that turns into a very bad day. So you wanna repeat this process over and over again until you do eventually get that shiny patch. And as you can see, this took me quite a long time. I think over 2000 steps in total and considering that it takes 50 steps to reset the poker radar, um, that's how long it took me to actually spawn a shiny patch of grass, even with these odds. So just be patient in this process. Once you hit that 40, that's the hard work kind of done. You want to just start reactivating your poker radar, respawning those patches of grass until you do get that shiny. And once you get the shiny, 
you can encounter it and it will always obviously be shiny because of the shiny patch of grass and your chain can continue still at this point if you catch the pokemon you've still got that 93 percent chance of the chain continuing so you can try for another shiny after this one so you can get multiple shinies of the same pokemon which is really ideal if you want to do that unfortunately for us we do catch the ditto hoping that our chain would continue and our chain actually ends on 40 which is a real shame for us because we can't actually get any more dittos which would have been ideal because you kind of want and uh, just more shiny dittos and obviously having better chances of getting those higher IV uh, dittos and maybe the chance of us getting to that 100 chain. I, I doubt that would have ever happened, but I attempted this a number of times. So I think this is probably about the 20th run I had trying to get the ditto chain up to 40. So it's very difficult. And like I say, doing everything correctly, your chain can just end uh, without for any reason because there is that 7% chance. And it, although 7% sounds a tiny amount and it sounds like the odds are always in your favor and it's never it's rarely going to happen it happens a lot it really does happen a lot and that is something that you're just going to have to kind of not get too distracted by not get too down by if you're doing this you just got to kind of keep at it and just have a lot of patience because that is the main aim of this game it is doable this method gives you the best shiny chances in the entire game so it's a really good method to kind of stick with and do and like i say if you just have that persistence and patience and you follow all these steps in this guide you're going to be on the right track and you'll be shiny hunting and getting successful catches in no time now if the chain goes wrong at any point this is why it was important to save before uh, you start your, your chain. You can just reset your game so you're not wasting any of your Pokeballs, you're not wasting any of your repels and you can come back to that starting point and start the whole process again so you're not continually having to go out and buy Pokeballs because money is a little bit difficult to get in this game sometimes. Although, if you think money is difficult, you should check out the money farming guide that I've done on the channel. Check that out if you do need uh, cash to buy repels and, and Pokeballs. But this method of saving at the very beginning will allow you to then just reset if things go wrong or if your chain's broken for no reason or if you break it accidentally by doing one of the things that we've listed just reset your game come back into it and you've not lost any resources while doing it i would also recommend when you are doing this process to always use your d-pad do not do not use your analog stick because you need to be very careful in specific situations where you're not going into patches of grass that you don't necessarily want to and the analog stick can be a little bit wild at times use the d-pad it's going to give you much better control and it's not going to mean that you accidentally mess up where you may otherwise with the analog controller which seems to just have a mind of its own and brilliant diamond channel pill so friends i think that about covers everything that i wanted to cover in today's guide and i hope it made sense for you and i hope this at the base of it is really helpful and allows you to start chaining pokemon and getting some shiny pokemon and um, even if you use this method not for shiny pokemon it is worth it for getting hidden ability pokemon in certain areas and things like that so you can use it for other applications as well just make sure you are following the steps that we've done in this video make sure that you're going into that the furthest patch of grass away from you that fourth one ideally you're catching the pokemon and you're not doing any of the things that will break your chain like going to the underground getting on your bike encountering a trainer or um encountering a wild pokemon you know so um and you should be fine and the biggest thing out of all of it is just having the patience because that is going to be the hard thing uh, you've just got to persist at it and then when you get that chain of 40 make sure that you just reset the radar reset it reset it reset it over and over again recharge reset recharge reset those patches of grass until you get that shiny one spawning and that is going to be the key to your shiny hunt so if you have enjoyed today's video, if you found it useful, please drop a like on the video. It really does help the channel out, it helps the video out a lot. It helps share it with other people that it might be helpful for as well. If you do enjoy the content here, uh, then do consider subscribing to the channel as well. There will be lots more brilliant Diamond Shannon Pearl content on the way. So hopefully you'll enjoy that as much as you have done this one. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you all for another episode here on the channel very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.